Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Okay, for the today's class, we are going to discuss on a stomach. Okay, the learning objectives for stomach under the following headings are the functions, the location of the stomach, its size, shape, the external parts, the relations, and then the microscopic structure, also known as histology, then the internal features of the stomach, the arterial blood supply and venous blood drainage, then the lymphatic drainage and nerve supply. The similar word to the stomach in another word is gaster, okay, in Greek and in Latin is venter. The functions of the stomach is to reserve the food, okay, and it helps to form the chyme inside the stomach with the help of the enzyme which is secreted by the stomach in, by the gastric cells okay formation of the chyme and it controls the rate and delivery of chyme into the small intestine the stomach it helps to deliver the chyme the chyme is the semi fluid okay we eat the food solid one but inside the stomach with the help with the help of the enzyme and the gastric acids and it forms the food to convert it into a semi fluid substance okay this is a chyme and the stomach helps to transfer this chyme into the small intestine okay and it the hydrochloric acid secreted by the gastric glands destroy the bacteria which is present in the food and the drinks okay intrinsic factor this intrinsic factor is most important uh, in our body system because it helps to absorb the vitamin b from our intestine into the bloodstream okay you got it right the intrinsic factor with the help of the intrinsic factor there's a chance of vitamin b absorption okay when lack of intrinsic factor present so lack amount of vitamin b to be absorbed into our body from the intestine okay now we can see the location of the stomach the location of the stomach it extend from the you see here this area in the quadrant the stomach the abdomen okay the abdomen is divided into nine quadrants there are some division is divided in only into four quadrants and there are some way that they are using with two transverse line and two vertical line okay and then divided into nine areas okay this area to the right upper one this is known as a right hypochondrium okay the middle one at the upper one upper part at the middle part of the quadrant is known as the epigastrium okay this is the left hypochondrium this is the left flank okay this area below to the gastrium below to the gastrium epigastrium this area is umbilicus the five area number five is umbilicus then this is right flank okay then over here is hypogastrium okay hypogastrium and seven and nine on the left side and right side at the lower part of the abdomen it is known as a iliac fossa okay iliac fossa or ilio inguinal region okay but this quadrant it is divided by two vertical plane okay two vertical plane plane and two horizontal plane the two vertical plane the upper one it is an imaginary line okay which passing through the pylorus the pyloric therefore it is known as a transpyloric plane okay then this one transtubercular plane this is an imaginary line which is extend from both end of the tubercle iliac tubercle okay the iliac tubercle is present in the outer surface of the ileum okay at the anterior third of the iliac crest okay it's present over here 
Therefore, this line is known as a transtubercular plane. The stomach is present in the left hypo. It extends from the epigastrium. Okay, yes, epigastrium region, then to the left hypochondrium, and then to the epigastrium again, to the umbilicus region. Okay, from the epigastrium, then to the left hypochondriac region, and then to the to the umbilicus region. Okay. It is also known as it present in the upper part of the upper part of the abdomen. Uh, the shape of the stomach is just like a J shape. Okay, we can see now the long axis of the stomach pass downward. It pass downward, right? And it slope forward. Okay, and then to the right. Okay, to the right. Then finally backwards and slightly upwards. Okay slightly backward and upwards this is the long axis of the stomach to form as a j-shape okay j-shape long axis is start long axis of the stomach is start from the cardiac cardiac orifice from this cardiac part of the stomach into the pyloric part of the stomach okay it tapers from the fundus on the left of the median plane okay see here the fundus tapers tapers mean the superior part is wider and then the inferior part is narrower okay that is the meaning of tapers it tapers from the fundus this is the fundus it tapers from the fundus okay on the left on the left of the median plane just imagine this is an immediate plane the stomach it tapers from the fundus on the left of the median plane to the narrow pylorus slightly to the right of the median plane so it is to the right of the median plane this the lower portion is to the right of the median plane okay tapers means this the upper border is wider and the lower border is narrower size and capacity the size of the the length the length of the stomach is 10 inch for 1 inch is equal to 2.5 cm, okay? Then if it is 10 inch, it means 20.5 cm. So approximately the length of the stomach, it will be maybe more than or less than, more or less than 20 meters, okay? 20 centimeters, I mean, okay? So the capacity of the stomachs are variable, okay? And it is a very highly distensible. So the size is the capacity is variable. Okay, at birth the size the capacity of the stomach is 30 ml. Okay, and up, at puberty the capacity of the stomach is increased, and in adults it's even more increased to to 1500 ml to 200 ml it means to 1.5 to 2 liters. Okay, in adult. Now we can see the, the external features, okay? There are two ends, that is a cardiac end and a pyloric end, okay? Two curvatures, curvatures. This is the lesser curvature, okay? Smaller part of the stomach, okay? On the right side. And on the left side, the curvature is the greater curvature of the stomach, okay? Two curvature. And we have two surface anterior and posterior okay two surface this is just like a flat it's just like a flap okay it has two ends then two borders or two curvatures okay and then two surfaces then we can see the parts what are the parts for parts it is divided into a cardiac cardiac part okay the cardiac part it begins the cardiac notch okay through this cardiac notch we can consider this portion of the stomach is a cardiac part okay the fundus fundus it's lie take the same point from the cardiac notch and make an imaginary line horizontally then the upper area of this imaginary line this is the fundus okay then the pyloric the body we can see further pyloric Part. This is a pyloric part, okay, of the stomach. It begins, it extends from the 
the lower part of the this portion between the pyloric orifice okay from the pyloric orifice the opening of the pyloric over here or the pyloric canal okay and with this line this is a pyloric part of the stomach now there are two relations of the stomach peritoneal relations and a visceral relations okay uh, the relations the stomach peritoneal relations we can see here on the lesser on the lesser curvature on the lesser curvatures of the stomach there is one there is a ligament okay a ligament extending from this lesser curvature of the stomach into the into the liver is known as a gastric hepatogastric ligament and another ligaments which extend from the lower part of the lesser curvature to the duodenum lower part of the greater uh, of the lesser curvatures to the first part of the duodenum and into the liver this is known as a hepato duodenal ligament okay this hepato and hepa hepatogastric and hepato duodenal ligaments are known as the lesser omentum remember hepatogastric hepatogastric to the liver hepato duodenal ligament okay this all together makes us a lesser omentum and we have a greater omentum okay a greater omentum is the this ligament okay it consists or it includes with both uh, cutaneous tissue with a lot of fats and some fibrous fascia also okay this greater omentum it's extend from the greater curvature okay greater curvature of the stomach lower two third okay this will be one third this will be another two third and this will will be the last one third then the lower two third the ex the greater omentum extending downward okay and it has a free border free end okay it does not attach anywhere okay it's just a free flap this is known as the greater omentum then this gastrosplenic ligament you can see here it is a ligaments which extends from the superior part of the greater curvature with some part of the fundus okay it extends from these two area the superior part of the greater curvature and the, some part of the fundus and into the splenic into the spleen this ligament is known as a gastrosplenic ligament same thing here gastrophrenic it is attached from the you see from the cardiac notch okay the cardiac notch the whole area of the fundus okay this ligament extends from the whole area of the fundus the remaining part of the fundus into the diaphragm okay therefore it is known as a gastrophrenic ligament so now we can just see this bare area this bare area is present on the posterior part of the, the stomach at the cardiac part of the stomach okay why it is known as bare area because all the stomach is covered by a peritoneum peritoneum okay it is covered by a peri peritoneum is a covering of the peritoneal cavity okay and except only at this portion the stomach it is not covered in the posterior part of the stomach at this cardiac portion this area it is not covered by a peritoneum therefore it is known as a bare area now we can see what are the visceral relations of the stomach we can see anteriorly first the stomach anteriorly it is related to the anterior abdominal wall okay this is a cut end this is a cut end of the anterior abdominal wall okay the stomach related to the anterior abdominal wall then to the left coastal margin see the stomach is related to the left coastal margin okay then left pleura and lung superiorly there will be a, a lung and a pleura okay so superiorly the stomach is related to the dome of the diaphragm 
then the pleura of the lung the plu pleural membrane and the lung okay on the left side laterally it is it is related to the coastal left coastal margin of the uh, ribs okay anteriorly is related with the anterior abdominal wall okay and then the medially it is related to the liver okay the left lobe of the liver okay now we can see this posterior related relations to the, of the stomach okay what are the visceral the visceral means visceral means organ okay on the posterior side of the stomach there are some spleen kidney then suprarenal gland the left portion left colic flexure splenic artery then a transverse mesocolon and body of the pancreas all these structures form as a stomach bed okay it's like the bed of the stomach where the stomach is rest or lies on above these structures okay therefore it is known as a therefore these structures form as a stomach bed you can see what how does it look like this is the stomach bed you see this is a stomach bed what do we have in a stomach bed what forms a stomach bed the diaphragm right you can see this portion of the diaphragm on the left side okay then the spleen kidney adrenal glands okay this is the spleen you see this dotted dotted portion of the stomach this is the posterior it's just showing its present on the posterior okay we are looking this view from the posterior view okay so the diaphragm forms the posterior bed then the spleen okay the spleen then the left kidney this is on the left side this is on the left side of the abdomen okay and posterior view left kidney then the adrenal glands okay also known as suprarenal means superior to the kidney okay and then splenic artery you can see this splenic artery left curvature left colic flexure flexure means the turning point of the colic colic means colon okay colon means this large intestine okay the turning point of the large intestine this is also related to the posterior part of the stomach then we can see here the pancreas also the body of the pancreas also form as a bed of the stomach then transmesocolon this one then the transverse colon okay these structures all together form as a stomach bed you see this is the stomach when we see from the anterior view we cut this stomach okay suppose we cut this portion we cut this membrane this ligament on the from the greater curvature and we open the stomach and we raise the stomach we flip it upward okay we can see the structures like this we separate the stomach from the greater omentum this is the greater omentum okay this yellow color here so greater omentum okay then you can see when we open the stomach we can reach the lesser sac okay lesser sac it's formed behind the stomach okay and it is a space between the posterior surface of the stomach and the stomach beds okay this is a lesser sac this is the portion this blue color this is the this color it's a space right between the stomach and the stomach bed microstructures of the stomach forms by four layers okay there are four layers in the stomach wall okay and these are uh, superiorly or superficially they are the serous layer okay then we can go more deeper we have a muscular layer and then a submucous and then mucosa you can see this one the layers of the stomach wall okay more superficial one is the serosa this is covered by a peritoneum okay this is serosa then we have three layers of muscles 
which forms a muscular layer of the stomach wall, okay, for the wall of the stomach. The outer muscle layer is the longitudinal. The fibers are arranged longitudinally, okay. They are along, they are directed parallel to the long axis of the stomach, okay. The fibers, the second layer of the muscle in the stomach, it's the circular. These are, the fibers are circle, okay. Then the innermost muscle layer of the stomach is the oblique part. The fibers run obliquely. They are not circular, they are not longitudinal, and they run in a way. They are not in the same direction would be above one. Okay, so it is oblique muscle layer. Okay, then the submucose. These form by a connective tissue, small fats, loose areolar connective tissue. Okay. And then the mucus, the mucus of the innermost layer of the stomach is a mucus. This mucus will form a folds. You see these folds inside the stomach, these are the rugae, okay? This is formed by the mucosa. Serous layer formed by the peritoneum, this part, okay? And muscular layer, three layers, outer longitudinal, middle circular layer, and innermost oblique fibers, okay? In submucous layer consists of loose areolar tissues and mucus. It is thick, soft, and velvety. It forms as, it forms a rugae. This mucus is lined by a simple columnar epithelium. The epithelium which covers the inner surface of the Stomach is the simple columnar epithelium, okay? And in the mucus layer, we can also have a glands, okay? Numerous glands, which can secrete acids. There are some glands which can secrete acids. There are some glands which can just secrete some intrinsic factor, okay? You can see the mucus part. You can see the mucus is thick, right? The mucus is thick, soft, and velvety. It's very thick. The mucus, the mucus layer of the stomach is very thick. Okay, and it is soft also. You see, these gastric bits. Okay, this is due to the depression of the mucosal layer. Okay, and through which these, the gastric glands will open into the gastric bits. Okay. These gastric bits are formed by the depression of the mucous layer, mucosa, okay, depression of the mucosa, okay, therefore it forms a rugae, rugae is the elevation, elevated part, okay, rugae is the elevated portion of the mucosa, whereas a gastric bit is the depression portion of the mucosa, okay, and this uh, mucosa is covered by a epithelium by which epithelium simple columnar epithelium right there are some glands present in the mucus you see these are some glands over here there are some chief cells endocrine cells and parietal cells parietal cell will secrete the acid okay remember that parietal will secrete the acid mucus next cell will secrete the mucus the mucus secretion okay like that and then the chief cell will secrete the pepsins now. Okay, then we have another deeper layer to the mucosa is a submuscularis. Okay, there are three layers of muscle at this area. One is the submucosa. Okay, this is submucosa. Submucosa where it is present only a loose areolar connective tissue. Okay. Loose areolar connective tissue is present in the submucosa of the of the what of the stomach. Okay, and in this submucosa layer, there is uh, some lymphatic vessels. Okay, the lymphatic vessels are numerous at this layer. Okay, and then muscular region, muscle layer. Okay, muscular region of the stomach wall. We have oblique, the most inner one. Then the middle part is the circular muscle okay and a longitudinal muscle okay then the 
most out of one is a serosal formed by a visceral peritoneum. Here we can see a real gay. You see the epithelium is covered by a by a simple columna. Why it is simple columna? Because the cell you can see here. You see the cell over here, okay? We can see the cell in here. It's taller. The length, the height of the cell, okay? The height of the cell. Can you see my arrow? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. The height of the cell is more than the width of the cell. Therefore, it is known as a columna. Okay? It's like a column. Okay? Column means the height is more than the width. Okay? So, therefore, the epithelium which covered to this a mucous layer of the stomach is known as a simple simple means all the cell layer all the cell layer attached to the membrane to the basement membrane okay like this one all the cell layer all the cell attached to the membrane okay that is simple okay columna means when a cell when a cell height the height of the cell is more than the width of the cell. Okay, that is columna. Then we can see uh, the gastric pits over here in between the real gay. Okay, in between the real gay, we can see a uh, gastric pits. Okay, then there are some glands. You see over here, these gastric glands, the rounded portion, these are the gastric glands. Okay. Some of them are parietal cells over here, red color one, okay? Then the chief cells are those bluish color, purplish color, okay? And we can see this part of the submucosa with this present only, eh? You see this arterioles, then the venule, then the veins, okay? These are the, along with it, there is also a lymphatic vessels, but Lymphatic vessels, it's transparent. We cannot be able to visualize the lymphatic vessels, the lymph vessels, okay? So this muscular layer, another layer below the mus, submucous layer, we have an oblique. This is oblique muscle layer, circular. Because the muscle arranged circularly, so see, we can see the long the long axis of each and every muscle fibers okay in longitudinal because the muscle arranged in long in a um, parallel direction so in during the transverse section of the stomach and seeing in the microscope for histology you can see like a pointed fibers okay this is the histology of the stomach you can see okay you can see over here the lymphatic nodules, okay? These are the lymphatic nodules which are the present in the stomach. That is in the submucous or mucosa, okay? Remember, the carcinoma always present or the gastric also always present in the submucosa, okay? At the submucosa part. And which the glands glands in the cardiac okay the cardiac region we can see the glands in the cardiac region okay means this gland okay which are taken from the gastric from the cardiac region most of the gland present in the cardiac region are the mucus gland okay to produce to secrete mucus it's like jelly type mucus type of the uh, how to say the secretions okay very sticky then the mu the glands which is present in the fundus and the body are mainly those mucus nexal which secrete mucus parietal or oxyntic cells which secretes acids and intrinsic factor okay then the chief cells secretes pepsinogen these cells mainly present in the fundus of and the body of the stomach. Well, remember, the glands in the pyloric region and the cardiac region, we have a mucus gland which secretes a mucus. Whereas in the fundus and the body, all these cells are present, okay? Mucus nexus, nexus, 
parietal or oxyntic cells and achieve cells. We can go now to the interior of the stomach. Remember that gastric folds, the gastric rugae, which is formed by the depression of the mucous layer of the stomach. Okay. And in a longitudinal, in a lesser curvature, okay, in a lesser curvature of the stomach, the rugae, the rugae arrange in a long longitudinal, okay. Longitudinal gastric rugae is present in the lesser curvature, okay. Whereas in the remaining portion, the rugae are arranged irregularly. Okay, but in here they arrange longitudinally. So whichever fluid contents of fluid beverage or any semi-fluid or any food which are taken into the stomach, most of the liquid contents goes through the travels through or spread through the lesser curvature of the stomach. Suppose now for a beer or for a, an alcohol for a hot tea. It goes through this way because the ryuke on this region is longitudinal. Okay. And there is a rapid passage of the semi fluid content of food on this lesser con lesser curvature, lesser curvature of the stomach. Therefore the this portion of the stomachs are always are always vul vulnerable for the gastric ulcer. Uh, these folds, okay, these rugae, these rugae, they can, they are disappeared when the stomach is fully distended, okay. When the stomach is distended, these rugae, gastric rugae, flatten or disappear, okay. The gastric pits, it's a region or the area where the, where the, gastric glands open okay the gastric canal or the magenstras this is the gastric ulceration vulnerable of the gastric this is also known as the gastric canal okay this is also known as a gastric or magenstras okay arterial supply of the stomach you can see now on the lesser curvature we have a right we have a left and right gastric artery okay supply to this area on the greater curvature on the superior part of the greater curvature it is supplied by a short gastric and a, a gastro left gastro epiploic artery okay and the lower part of the greater curvature of the stomach is supplied by a gastro right gastro epiploic artery and a superior pancreatico duodenal artery okay now we can see this left gastric artery is a direct branch of a celiac drum okay then the right gastric artery is a branch of a common hepatic artery okay and then the short gastric artery is a branch of a splenic artery you see this is a splenic artery this is a branch of the splenic artery and gastroepiploic artery also is a splenic is a branch of a splenic artery whereas this gas right gastroepiploic artery is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery you see right now you can see the left gastric is a direct branch of the selectron right gastric this is left gastric artery this is right gastric artery is a branch from the common hepatic artery the left gastro epiploic artery left gastro epiploic artery is a branch of the is a branch of a splenic artery okay and short gastric artery also is a branch of the short gastric artery also is a branch of the splenic artery okay well as the last one we can see Right gastroepiploic is a branch of a gastroduodenal gastroduodenal artery. Artery at this region between the stomach and the duodenum is known as a gastroduodenal artery.
Now we are coming to the venous drainage of the stomach. Yeah. Uh, the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein. These left gastric vein and right gastric veins, they accompany the left gastric artery and right gastric artery only. Okay. We have left gastroepiploid vein, short gastroepiploid vein at the superior part of the fundus. On the fundus region of the stomach okay this short gastric vein is present this left gastro on the left side remember on the left side on the left side of the stomach the short gastric and the left gastroepiploid drains into the splenic artery to the splenic vein okay in a venous drainage the short gastric the short gastric vein and the left gastro the short gastric vein and the left gastroepiploid drains into a splenic vein. And then the right gastroepiploid drains into the superior mesenteric vein. You can see the picture here. You see the vein over here? The vein which drains the stomach on the right side on the right side of the stomach from the on the left on the lesser curvature. We have two veins around this area right which accompany the left gastric artery and the short and the right gastric artery these veins also known as the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein these veins drains directly into the you see portal vein this is a portal vein before it enters the liver okay this vein is known as a portal vein then we can see the short gastric vein and the left gastroepiploid vein drains into the splenic vein okay then this splenic vein will go in will drains into the portal vein okay then now we can see this the right the right gastroepiploid vein drains into the superior mesenteric vein okay it means the portal vein forms at a region where the splenic vein and a superior mesenteric vein communicates okay communicates each other therefore the portal vein started formation the portal vein begins at the junction of the splenic vein and a superior mesenteric vein okay can you get it right do you yes, understand ma yes. okay now we can see the lymphatic drainage the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is very important clinically because the cancer of the stomach it passed through by lymphatic it passed through the lymph vessels okay uh, there are four lymphatic territories in the stomach which is divided by a long this one by a long axis it is divided into a right two half okay right two half uh, right two third and left one third okay it means only this area, only this line divided a stomach into right and left. Okay, right two third and left one third. Okay, then this right two third it is again divided into a superior two third and lower one third. Okay, then again this area the left one third is again divided into a upper one third and lower two third okay these are the area one three two four okay the area number number one includes the it comes it is the larger the largest area for the lymphatic territories okay at this region and it lies along the lesser curvature cardiac notch and cardiac part of the stomach and some part of the fundus okay and then the area number three it uh, includes this fundus part and some greater curvature body uh, and the body of the stomach and the fundus part of the stomach okay then the area which forms the area number two for the lymphatic territories are those greater coverage of the stomach and some part of the body of the stomach okay this forms a area number two and this area number four is a pyloric part okay this is also pyloric part 
which forms in the area number two. Okay, greater curvature along with the pyloric part. Here, some part of the lesser curvature and some part of the pyloric part of the stomach. So, according to this region, the nodes drains to a specific lymph nodes. Okay, in the area number one. This area over here, the limb uh, drains into the left gastric nodes. Okay. These left gastric nodes lies along the left gastric vessels. Okay. And then the area number two, you can see the area number two from the lesser portion, lesser, uh, greater, greater curvature of the stomach drains into the lymph nodes of the right gastroepiploic nodes okay this right gastroepiploic nodes presents on the vessels along the right gastroepiploic nodes uh, epiploic artery okay whereas this area over here it drains the limb the limb into the hepatic node okay into the hepatic nodes hepatic node and the hepatic node and the right gastric node and the hepatic node the nodes in the the limb the left gastric nodes also drain the abdominal part of the esophagus okay it lies along the left gastric vessels okay and the area number two area number two cancer of the stomach mostly occurred here on the greater curvature of the stomach okay the limb drains into the right epiploic, right gastroepiploic from the greater curvature and from the pyloric part of the area it's drained, the limb drains into the pyloric nodes, okay? And we can see the area number three, it's also known as pancreatico splenic area, okay? Because it is related to the spleen and tail of the spleen and the tail of the pancreas and the hilum of the spleen okay therefore this area is known as a pancreatico splenic nodes splenic area and even the, the limb which drains from this area it drains into the nodes which lies along the short gastric vein okay this node over this region is known as a pancreatico splenic nodes same thing here in the area number four from this area is playing into two group of nodes to hepatics to hepatic and to the right gastric nodes okay and all these lymph nodes groups drains into the celiac nodes okay? except this area number three and number four area number three and number two from area number one and number four from the area of the lesser curvature and the pyloric the lymph vessels or the efferent vessels will drains all the limb into the group of lymph nodes around the celiac trunk okay that is a celiac node and then from the celiac trunk all the lymph will be passed into the lymphatic vessels which is dilated at the which is dilate, dilated at the posterior wall of the abdomen to a cristana chile. See, these are the lymph nodes, okay? The last lymph node groups which drains the stomach, okay? It drains the limb into the cisterna chile by a intestinal trunk. Now we can come to the nerve supply of the stomach. Uh, it is supplied by the stomach. It's innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is derived from it's derived the fibers from the vagus nerve. Okay, the functions of the vagus nerve in the stomach is to secrete the acid by parietal cells. Okay, and in the sympathetic innervation, the fibers derived from the T6 to T7 spinal segment. Okay, and the main functions of this of this spinal segment in the stomach are the vasomotor then motor means move, movement right movement in order to remove the food content 
in order to cause the peristalsis of the stomach and then the pain sensation are responsible are uh, carried by this sympathetic nerve okay pain sensation are responsible by the sympathetic nerve in the stomach okay and we can see a vagus nerve is divided into a anterior vagal trunk and posterior vagal trunk in the stomach you can see see anterior vagal trunk it is actually a left vagus nerve okay it is we have normally in our body at the thorax we can we have a left vagus nerve and right vagus nerve when this vagus nerve arrive at the abdomen at the junction of this diaphragm or GE junction of the gastric this vagus nerve converted into the left gastric the left vagus nerve converted into a anterior vagus nerve and posterior vagus nerve convert and the right vagus nerve converted changes into a posterior vagus nerve because due to the gut rotation during the embryological development okay there is a gut rotation during embryo embryological development then we can see there are branches arises from the anterior vagus nerve some of these are hepatic branch okay then what is this the anterior nerve of lethargic the nerve which are supplied over the lesser curvature are the nerves of lethargic the nerve of lethargic which derive which give rise from the anterior vagal trunk is known as anterior nerve of lethargic were asked for the posterior vagal vagal trunk it is known as a posterior nerve of the latter jet we have another branch of a nerve criminal nerve of grassy this derive give this branch give rise from a posterior vagus nerve okay we have a celiac branch both in the right and posterior vagus nerve you see the uh, anterior vagal trunk the hepatic nerve celiac branch you can see celiac branch this one anterior nerve of lateral jet this one this is anterior nerve of lateral jet and another branch which arises from these lateral jets they form as a cross foot okay. the terminal branch of the nerve from the lateral jet forms as the foot of a cross okay then the posterior vagal trunk we also have a branch a celiac branch same thing okay and a nerve of grassy nerve of grassy it is also known as a criminal nerve of grassy and posterior nerve of lateral jet that's all for today's class do you understand yes ma'am ma yes. okay thank you so much yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am you're welcome ma'am yeah you're welcome bye bye, bye, -bye.